Hey everybody, RetroPyGuy here. Today we're gonna to go over the proper shutdown and restart functions of RetroPy. So I was actually asked this question very recently from a um, customer that was brand new to RetroPy and he said, what is the proper shutdown methods for RetroPy? So I thought it was kind of a newbie question, obviously, which is perfectly fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with asking questions, especially if you're new to the system, because we all didn't know how to shut down, you know, when we first jumped onto RetroPie. But I actually ran into a customer recently that had a corrupt card after a few months, which is kind of strange if you're not going in there and tweaking anything. You know, obviously, if you're going in and you're messing around with files in the system itself, you can obviously, you know, put something in the wrong place or delete something by accident and corrupt your card. It's really easy to do. A lot of us have done this. I've done it hundreds of times, you know, when I'm messing around with um, these cards. But he hadn't been doing any of that. So we were talking, you know, back and forth just briefly, just trying to figure out what went wrong so we can try to keep it from happening in the future. And he said at one point, um, what's the proper way to shut this down? Am I not supposed to be just ripping the power cord out of the side of the Raspberry Pi? So that led me to think that maybe there's a lot more people out there that don't know the proper shutdown techniques for RetroPy. So um, whether you're a newbie or you've been doing this for a while, I think it's definitely important that we all know how to properly shut this down or restart it or exit emulation station if we want to go into our terminal. So I'm going to go through a bunch of different functions on here today just to give you a firm grasp of how to go through these functions properly. So all these functions can be found by just hitting your start button on your gamepad or the enter button if you're using a keyboard, you know, if you're running this on the Raspberry Pi 400, for example. So if we go to our main menu, we can see that quit is the final option down all the way at the bottom. So if we go and select that with our A button, we come to these four different options. So we have restart emulation station, quit emulation station, restart system, and shutdown system. So if we're looking to shut down the system, you know, if we're done playing for the day, we're gonna go down to shut down. So we would just go here, we would select A, and it's gonna ask us, do we really wanna shut down? And we would just hit yes. Now I'm not going to fully shut down here. So that would be if we're just trying to close out our system, boot it down, and now with the Raspberry Pi 4, you do also have to hit the little uh, clicker button to power off the power feed to your Raspberry Pi, Retro Pi, and your Raspberry Pi do run separately. So this is just gonna boot down your card and RetroPy. Going in and just hitting that button once the lights um, stop blinking on there and it's just a solid red button, you would just go in then and click off the power to your Raspberry Pi. Or if you don't have the uh, click function on there, you could just go ahead and unplug that power supply. But you don't wanna do that until you see that your green light is done flickering and it's just a solid red light. So that's the proper way to shut down. Now there's also the restart system. Now that's if you're doing like an update, for example, or maybe you just paired your 8-bit DO uh, Bluetooth controller. If you're doing any sort of updates or customizations within your RetroPie game collection card, you're gonna wanna restart your system. Same exact way, we're gonna go up to restart system, hit the A button. It's going to ask us to confirm if we really wanna restart. You would just go ahead and select yes. And what this is going to do is it's going to power down your card 100% and then boot it right back up. So this is just where we would go in and confirm changes and stuff like that where we need to reboot. So I'm going to go back. Now quit emulation station. This is going to be your option if you want to go into your terminal. So if you want to go in and um, make some changes, you can do all of that without putting your card into another computer and going in that way, you could do it all right from here by going into your terminal. So by quitting emulation station, you're just closing out emulation station and you're able to access your terminal. So that's how you would do that. Same exact functions here, hit the A button. It's gonna say really quit. If we jumped out of here, we would come up to our terminal where we can go in and put sudo and you know do whatever we wanna do there. You can do sudo reboot. If you, you don't do this by mistake and you wanna reboot your system, you can add a bunch of different things that way. There's endless possibilities for the terminal. So that's how you would do that. You would exit emulation station for that. So we're gonna go back again. And now we have the option to restart emulation station. This is basically like restarting your system, but you're just doing the emulation station portion of that. Pretty much the exact same functions, more or less. It's a quicker restart. This will bring you to where you're um, loading your ROMs in. So if you're just trying to do a quick, you know, restart, that would be your quicker option. But it's quicker by you know a few seconds, really. It's not a big 
big difference at all. So I do know that we are doing a very basic video today. Uh, we're usually doing a lot more in-depth stuff with RetroPie, but it's very important that we know how to go through all of these shutdown or restart functions on RetroPie. You know, if we're doing this the wrong way, we're just asking for problems. Is it going to cause, you know, a massive issue if we, you know, pull the power supply out of our Raspberry Pi a couple times? No, absolutely not. I, you know, I tell people all the time, you could have a problem the first time you do it, or you could have a problem, you know, six months or a year down the road when you've done it every day. There's no science behind, you know, when you could have a corruption to your card or when you could cause some irreversible damage to either your card or your Raspberry Pi here. You now every system's different, everything happens differently, so the best way to protect yourself and to uh, make sure that your card and your Raspberry Pi system in general lasts a really long time is just make sure that you're doing this right as much as you possibly can. I mean we always have these issues here and there where you know we trip over the power supply cable and it pulls out of our Raspberry Pi and you know obviously powers it down the wrong way or the dogs run by or the kids run by and dislodge it. You know stuff happens it's not the end of the world but as long as we're going through here and we're trying to restart and power down our system the proper way every time you know we're going to obviously extend the life of our Raspberry Pi and our RetroPi game collection card. So all that being said, I hope this video finds you well and we all have a clear understanding of exactly how we need to be shutting down and restarting our system. So that's going to do it for today. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of different tutorials, gameplay demos, uh, product reviews, and we've just gotten into some virtual pinball machines too. So we will have a lot more content with virtual pinball machines coming out. So definitely stay tuned. A lot of cool stuff happening. And then of course, check us out on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.